And this afternoon, Rhode Island leaders joined the nationwide call for peace. Iowa News News reporter Jared Pliner picks up our team coverage live with the Providence Mobile Newsroom. Mike and Kelly, it was said today that this news conference was very much last minute, and when different corners were, be, were asked to participate, so many were game. We grieve for Dallas. A pot of us died last night. Both senators, the governor, police, mayors, and community leaders together at Providence's West End Recreation Center ending a week of killings in three states. We can't allow ourselves to become callous to the tragedies that these are and to the very real human suffering involved in every single one of these acts of violence. The governor speaking to police. You deserve to go home every night to your families at the end of your shift safely. And to all the members of the community who are here, you deserve to be safe too. This rec center where midnight basketball launched just last night, a community police partnership focused on safer streets. We need to build stronger respect in relationships. Unfortunately, we have others that want to take the opportunity and ambush police officers. We can't ignore the history of racial disparities that exist in this country, nor can we dismiss how the dangers law enforcement officers face add to the complexity of how they respond to potentially violent suspects. Kobe Dennis of Midnight Basketball said years ago he didn't respect police until he saw the difficulties of the job and the good positive interactions can do. Doing your job as a law enforcement officer is riding by young kids, getting out the car, shaking hands, saying hello, introducing yourself. And much like Senator Reid, the governor acknowledged there is no denying that there are racial disparities in our society and our criminal justice system. She said, while black and Hispanic Rhode Islanders make up 18% of the population, they make up 45% of the prison population here in this state. She is pushing for reforms up on Smith Hill. Now, new at 6 o'clock, we get perspectives on Dallas from two very high-ranking police officers. For now, live with the Province Mobile Newsroom, I'm Jared Planner, Eyewitness News. As law enforcement officers across the nation mourn the loss of the five Dallas police officers, they continue to do their duty to serve and protect. But they're serving at a time when people are targeting them, and we wanted to know how they continue to do their jobs. Eyewitness News reporter Jared Pliner is live with more details for us. Mike and Kelly, at 5 o'clock, we brought you a joint news conference where many interests were represented, and they are all disturbed by the national violence. Last night, a police community basketball program debuted at that Providence site. Police say more outreach is needed, but tonight, police shaken by what happened down south. Providence Police Chief Hugh Clemens on turning on the TV in the middle of the night. It was painful, uh, frustrating. I have friends in the Dallas PD close friends and the top man at the Rhode Island State Police on how Dallas is affecting his men and women. They see it, they feel it, and Dallas could be Providence, Providence could be Cranston, West Warwick. They have to be concerned about where they are, um, responding if someone's elevated. Those things I'm sure go through their mind anyhow, but it becomes real with the issues that happen in Dallas. However, you cannot prepare and you cannot train for an ambush, and you cannot be totally paranoid in going out and performing this job. The colonels were at the West End Recreation Center today decrying the violence and calling for more police community collaboration. I asked about minority Providence residents who might feel targeted and treated differently by police. We can't do enough to expand our partnerships and our relationships. So I would say to them, join with us. And if you truly get to know the Providence police, you know how we're built and what we mean. And let's face it, in American cities, we're not going to get out of this unless we do it together. And there have been recent local examples of law enforcement showing restraint where deadly force could have been used. One of those examples in West Greenwich when police could not restrain a murder suspect despite several officers being on top of him. A dog, pepper spray, and stun guns all used. No bullet was ever fired. Live with the Mobile Newsroom tonight, I'm Jared Pletter, Eyewitness News.